We are doing it here at the I Am Television Network and the World Power Gospel Radio, going all over the world, preaching and doing great things, shaking the devil's kingdom. Also tonight, uh, t I would like to introduce my state bishop of the state of Virginia, none other than the Honorable Bishop Dr. C.M. Tate. He will introduce our great guest for tonight. Man of God, Pastor Gerald Smith, pastor of the New Jerusalem Baptist Church in Kinsale, Virginia. And he's going to come with the kingdom experience. Receive now this great man of God who has a great word from the Lord. Pastor Gerald Smith. Amen. Amen. Praise, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We thank God for this awesome privilege to be with you on this wonderful day or Wherever you're located this night, we first give honor and praise to our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank God for the tremendous grace gift that God has given to us, none other than Dr. Apostle Anthony Mays. And my spiritual father, none other than Bishop Dr. Claude Tate, Jr. Amen. We are so grateful today. We are so grateful today to be with you. Amen. I am your friend, your brother, none other than Pastor Gerald Smith of the New Jerusalem Baptist Church, where God lives. Amen. amen. Let me say that again. Where God lives. Amen. Amen. Today, hallelujah, we'll be coming from, amen, a passage of scripture that might have been overlooked. Amen. It's hidden in Proverbs in the Old Testament, Proverbs chapter 19, verse 21. Proverbs Chapter 19, verse 21. It reads thusly, there are many plans or devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord that will stand. Some translations say there are many plans in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the purpose that word counsel, the purpose of the Lord that will stand. Today, I want to speak to you about the power of purpose. The power of purpose. God has given the 7.3 plus billion of people that's on the face of this planet, rim called Earth, a purpose. And there are five questions that we must answer in the human heart in order to fulfill this subject or this statement that I'm teaching on the power of purpose. The first, the first question we must answer is who am I? Who am I? Glory to God. That's very important. That's talking about and dealing with our identity. We must understand where we came from and who sent us. Who Am I? Number two. It's the second question we must answer is where am I from? Where am I from? Yes. Hallelujah. That's talking about your source. That's talking about your heritage. Amen. So you must know who am I as well as where am I from? Because it's hard to fulfill purpose when you don't know who you are, nor where you came from. Yeah. Amen. amen. And the third question that we are talking about, amen, in this teaching is why am I here? Why am I here? Why is the most important question you will answer? Why are we here? Hallelujah. The scripture here tells us that there are many devices or plans in a man's heart. Nevertheless, it's the Lord's counsel or purpose that we're staying. So why are we here? Amen. The third question we must answer in the human heart. Glory to God. In order to fulfill your divine purpose for being here in earth. The fourth question is, what can I do? What can I do? That's talking about our potential. Hallelujah. It's a sad indictment that so many people that are existing every day don't know the reason why, so they can't release their potential because they don't know why. My God, my God, I hope, I hope you're not in one of the four till I get to the five. Because the fifth one tells us, glory to God, 
Uh, where am I going? Where am I going? We're going somewhere. It's talking about our destiny. We all have a destiny. Amen. So these are the five questions that we must answer before we can fulfill our divine purpose that God has given us from eternity in this rim planet called Earth. Amen. I just want to drop a few nuggets on you uh, in this teaching. Number one, every human was created to live with meaning and purpose. Yeah, amen. You were not just created just to make a living. All right. You were created and sent to earth on behalf of heaven to fulfill a divine purpose. So you have to answer the question, why? Why are we here? The power of purpose. Yeah. Number two, until you and I discover or your personal reason for living, you will never be fulfilled. Amen. My God, you will live life frustrated without fulfillment. Yeah. You will live life beat down and broke, busted, and disgusted. Okay. Why? Because what happens is we don't know our purpose. I've, I've learned in this short time that I've been on uh, this planet called Earth as being 50 years old. Glory to God. I, I understand that the two most greatest commodities that God has given to any human is time and energy. Yeah. And so you don't want to find yourself wasting these two most important commodities doing something God didn't tell you and I to be doing. Amen. We're still talking about the power of purpose. You don't want to allow frustration to show up. You don't want to be complaining. You don't want to be murmuring. You don't know why you wake up to be a part of another day. But the psalmist told us, say, this is the day that the Lord has made. We should and shall rejoice and be glad in it. When you know your purpose, you can rejoice in the midst of the AT devil hockey sticks on your trail. Hallelujah. So we thank God when we know the power of purpose, we can fulfill our divine destiny. Hallelujah. There, there are four keys in life under this teaching the power of purpose that we should be mindful. Hallelujah. To understand the difference between a purpose-filled life and a life without meaning, number one is the greatest tragedy in life is not death. I'm going to say that again. The greatest tragedy in life is not death, but life without purpose. Hallelujah. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying that it's more tragic to live and not know why than to die and not know life. My God, my God. Let me say that again because, because, because too often we think the greatest tragedy or catastrophe is in life when someone die. My God, it's, it's, it's a tragedy when you don't die in Christ. My God, but while we are living, hallelujah, you need to know your purpose. And it's more tragic to live and not know why than to die and not know life. My God, my God. That's, that's one of the keys to life in fulfilling uh, the power of purpose. The second one is the greatest challenge in life is knowing what to do. My God, every day is people that's waking up to a new day of mercy, a new day of grace, and they don't know why they are living. So the greatest challenge is in life is knowing what to do. Do you know what to do with your life? My God, if you don't know what to do with your life as the product, we need to get back to the manufacturer whom is God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Are you doing what you supposed to be doing? Do you know what to do with your life? What drives you out of bed every morning? My God, my God. My, what propels people in your life to carry you through another day? Are you living for a paycheck or are you living for purpose? My God, my God, my God. The second one was the greatest challenge in life is knowing what to do. Number three is the greatest mistake in life is being busy but not affected. My God, I'm still talking about the power of purpose. I'm still talking about the power of purpose. The greatest mistake in life is being busy but not affected. 
What are you saying? I can be busy and not effective. When you don't understand your purpose, you could be doing something outside of the will of God. Hallelujah. A good thing don't mean you're doing the right thing. So you should never do something that's good at the expense of what's right. My God, because God would always put us in the right place, the right position, with the right people. Hallelujah. If we understand our purpose. Hallelujah. We don't never want to be busy, but not affected. Hallelujah. Number four, under the keys to life. The greatest failure in life is being successful in the wrong assignment. My God, my God, my God, my God. The greatest failure in life is being successful in the wrong assignment. What are you saying? It's just like somebody give you uh, a written test and they tell you and I to answer all of the questions on the left hand side. But yet we answer all the questions on the right hand side and we get all of them right on the right hand side. But the instruction was to answer the questions on the left hand side. So the greatest failure in life is to be successful in the wrong assignment. Are you in the right assignment? Did God tell you why he sent you, why he chose you, why he set you, why he commissioned you, why he charged you? Because the manufacturer, as God being, can only reveal to the product his or her purpose. You have to understand God is a God of purpose. All you have to do is go to Genesis chapter 1, and you will find God is a God of purpose. Yeah. A lot of times we think that Genesis is, is the mind of God, but Genesis is the handwork of God. Genesis 1 is the handwork of God. You want to find the mind of God, you got to go into the epistle of Ephesians, yeah. and you will find the mind of God. But Genesis 1 is where you find the hand of God. Yeah. So the greatest failure in life is to be successful in the wrong assignment. Yeah, amen. Are you in the right assignment? That's a question that you have to answer with God, yeah, your creator. Amen. Hallelujah. But if you don't know your assignment, if you don't know your purpose, you have tuned in to the right station. Because yeah. God has a solution. He has an answer for your problem. Hallelujah. 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 And once you discover your purpose, that's two thirds of your life. My God, my God, my God. So as we, as we unwrap this verse of scripture in Proverbs chapter 19, glory to God. Verse 21, there are many plans or devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel or purpose of the Lord that we're saying. Did, 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 did you see that? Did, did, let, let me read that again. Let, 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 let me read that. Did you hear that? There are many plans or devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the purpose or the counsel of the Lord that shall stand. In other words, let me give you some more nuggets in this teaching. Hallelujah. Before I get raptured in and don't instruct you like I should. Hallelujah. Because I come to realize that we can inspire people through preaching and not instruct them through teaching. Hallelujah. Because we not only want to inspire you through preaching, but we want to instruct you through teaching so we can demonstrate what God say we can have when we understand his purpose. Number one. Number one, under the power of purpose. Purpose is more important than your plans. All right. My God, my God. What are you saying? God's purpose for your life trumps and is more important than the plans that we make for our own life. Yeah. Hallelujah. Number two, glory to God. Purpose is more powerful than our plans. Number one was purpose is more important than our plans. Number two, purpose is more powerful than our plans. What are you saying? God's purpose will prevail over our plans. Hallelujah. Even if we don't do what God called us to do, God's purpose will still prevail over our plans. Number three, purpose always precedes plans. Purpose always precedes plans. In other words, here it is, here it is, here it is. In other words, that means before you and I were even born to make plans, God already had a purpose for our life. 
Let me say that again. Purpose for seeds plan. That means before you were born to make plans, God already had a purpose for your life, for my life, for our lives. And so once we come back to God, hallelujah, he'll reveal to you, hallelujah, the, the plans, the purpose that he had for our lives. Let's, let's look at, let's look at Jeremiah. Glory to God. We call him the weeping prophet. Jeremiah, the 29th chapter, verse 11. Glory to God. Let God tell you. During, during, during this time, the, 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 I call them the royal family, the, 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 the kids of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They were in captivity, but God still spoke to them to tell them in verse 11. He said, for I know the plans or I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace. My God, my God. And not of evil to give you an expected end. God already know what he thinks towards you and about you and I. But do we know that? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I want to go, I want to go to Isaiah, the eagle prophet. My God, my God. Isaiah, the 46th chapter and verse number 10. Hallelujah. I pray that you are just as excited about this teaching as I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isaiah 46 and 10 says, declaring the end from the beginning, from ancient times, the things that are not yet, not yet done saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do my pleasure. Let me read that one more time for somebody missed that. Doing, declaring the end from the beginning. My God, my God. And from ancient times, the things that are not yet done saying, my counsel. God say, my counsel, my purpose shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, God is a God of purpose. Yes. Here, here, here's why, because purpose is the end, but plans are the process. God will never show you the process and plans because if he know if you and I knew the process and plans you wouldn't want the purpose anymore I got to say that again because somebody didn't catch it hey glory purpose is the end of a thing but the plans in of the process God will not show you and I the process in the plans because if we knew the process in the plans you wouldn't want the purpose anymore in other words, God will show us certain glimpse, but he won't show us everything because if he showed everything we had to go through, we wouldn't want the purpose anymore through the process and the plan. All right, all right. My God, my God, the power, the power of purpose. Yeah. Hallelujah. This verse right here means that you and I are to pursue God for his purpose before we make plans. So that your plans can be in keeping with God's purpose so you don't waste your time. I told you the two most important commodities is the time and energy. Yeah. Hallelujah. What is purpose and why is purpose so important? Purpose is defined as the original intent. The original intent yeah. Yeah. for the creation of a thing. Glory to God. Number two, the original existence of a thing, why a thing exists is called its purpose. Yeah, right. Number three, the original desired result for the creation of a thing, hallelujah, that is called purpose. What was in the mind of the manufacturer when he made you and I the product? That's called its purpose. Yeah. Number four, purpose is defined as the original reason why a thing was made. Hallelujah. Do you, not, do you know why you was made? Do you know why you was made? It is also the motivation for creation. In other words, whatever a manufacturer was motivated by becomes the purpose for his product. In other words, whatever a manufacturer was motivated by becomes the purpose for his product. Purpose, therefore, God says, is more important than your plans and my plans and our plans. Yeah, I pray I'm getting an amen out there in the waiting audience of the congregation out there in the global. Hallelujah. 
Therefore, purpose is, is function for which a thing was created. Yeah. Let me say that again. Purpose is therefore the function for which a thing was created. Yeah. My, God. my God, my God. Everything that God created uh -huh. was the design was designed to fulfill an assignment. Yeah. Right. Everything that God designed or created yeah. was created to fulfill a divine assignment or an assignment. Amen. What are you saying? Let's use the fish for example. You take a fish and take him out of the water and put him on land, he self-destruct. Because God didn't, God didn't create the fish for land. He created the fish for water. But take the fish and put him in water. Now the fish know purpose now and it become genius. My God, my God. My God, my God. So if you take anything out of its original assignment, it will self-destruct itself. Amen. So we thank God that we need to know our purpose. Amen. Praise the Lord. Purpose is so important. Hallelujah. That, that death can't stop you. Come here and help me, Apostle Paul. Ah. Apostle Paul understood all that he went through. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pastor Paul understood all that he went through when he got blinded on the road of Damascus yeah. when he used to persecute the church. Right. But then he had an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. And he said, why do you persecute my people? Yeah. Why are you persecuting me, he said. As other words, the people are my people. Yeah. Why are you persecuting me? But then Paul got blinded, but then he said, hey, glory, a fearful Man of God named Ananias down there to the way called straight to lay hands on Paul to receive his sight and receive the Holy Spirit that he would know his purpose. And Paul became one of the most inspirational writers by the Spirit of God in the New Testament. Hallelujah. So we thank God that we can look at Paul's life. Because Paul told young Timothy, hallelujah, in 2 Timothy chapter 4, he said, I have... I have been poured out as a drink offering. My departure is at hand. My God, he said, I have fought a good fight. I have kept the faith. I have finished the course. He said, through all he went through, Paul said, purpose sustained me. Hallelujah. That I can fulfill what God called me to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God. Hallelujah. Thank God for Daniel. Hallelujah. When he wouldn't bow down. Hallelujah. To the image. Hallelujah. Thank God that Daniel wouldn't stop praying. Daniel would not stop praying. Hallelujah. And then they wrote a decree for to tell Daniel if he pray, they're going to throw him in the lion's den. Hallelujah. I, 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 I kind of overspoke that time because Shadrach and Meshach uh, in Abednego uh -huh, was the one thrown into the fiery furnace. But see, Daniel was hanging around somewhere too. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Amen. While they was going through, Daniel was hanging around too. Yes. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. But then, yeah, with a purpose. But when, yes, but when Daniel said, I'm going to stay focused on purpose because I can't, I can't fulfill purpose without staying in commune with my God. Yes. Hallelujah. I don't care what decrees you make. I'm going to open the window and pray to my God yes. of my salvation. And they threw Daniel in the lion's den. And the lion must have lost his teeth. Because when they looked at Daniel for Daniel the next morning, Daniel was still in one piece. Yes. Because purpose will protect you. Yeah. Let me insert this right now. Let me insert this right now. I just feel led to insert this. Amen. Your greatest, your greatest uh, challenge in life is not provision. All right. Your greatest challenge in life is knowing your purpose. Know your my God, my God, my God. Hallelujah. It's knowing your purpose. Yeah. Hallelujah. And when you know your purpose and get in line with our Savior and our Lord, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You can do great exploits the same way he done. Even greater, Jesus said. Hallelujah. Yeah. I just want to, as my time is progressing, I want to share seven principles 
a purpose. Seven principles a purpose. Number one, I'm sure you probably could figure out all this boasting that uh, this young preacher been sharing with you and teaching you about purpose. You have understood now God is a God of purpose. God is a God of purpose. Number two, purpose is found in everything. Purpose is found in everything. Hallelujah. See, sometimes we don't understand why we go through certain things, why we, why, why we face certain troubles, why we face certain turbulence, why we face certain trials, troubles. But there's purpose in everything. Amen. Hallelujah. Can you give God thanks? I'm in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18. Give thanks in, in everything. Yeah. Give thanks. Not for everything. In everything. Yeah. Give yeah. thanks. For this is the will of God for us yeah. in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Right Number three, not every purpose is known. So if every purpose is not known, then you and I as the product must go back to the manufacturer right. so we can answer the question, why uh -huh. am I here? My God, my God, because if you don't answer the question, why am I here? You will never know who you are. All right, amen. Not only who you are, you will never be able to answer why am I here or where did I come from? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you will never be able to release your potential. What can I do? And you will miss out on where are you going? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's your destiny. Yeah. So not every purpose is known. So we need to get back to the one that gives us purpose. Yes, Number four, where purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. Where purpose is not known, abuse is automatic. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. 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 The, 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 this, this number four of the seven principles of power. Number five, if you ever want to know the purpose of a thing, never ask the thing. If you and I ever want to know the purpose of a thing, never ask the thing. In other words, if you have someone sitting down with you viewing this broadcast, you should never ask them your purpose because they are a thing like you. They are a product like you. So you can't ask them your purpose because they are a thing or they are a product like you and like I am. So we need to go back to the manufacturer of the product and ask him, why am I here? My God, my God, my God. Number six. Number six is the purpose of a thing is only in the mind of the maker. Yes. Hallelujah. The purpose of a thing is only in the mind of the maker. Of the maker. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray that you're getting some revelation and insight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't care where you are in life right now. God hasn't given up on you, you shouldn't give up on yourself nor God. Hallelujah. If you would just take time to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, he will exhort you to knowing your purpose in due season. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the purpose of a thing is only in the mind of the maker. Number seven, plans may, may change. Plans may change, but purpose is permanent. My God, my, my God, my God. Plans may change, but purpose is permanent. Good God Almighty. In other words, when God gave Adam the delegated responsibility to name the animals, to name the animals, hallelujah, what Adam called them, they were. Amen. So a sheep never became a giraffe. Well, amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In other words, God doesn't change who you are. If God made you to be a man, you shouldn't get confused in thinking that he made you to be a woman. My God, my God, my God. We have to understand that plans may change, but purpose is permanent. Hallelujah. And so we serve a God 
of purpose. God is a God of purpose. Hallelujah. I pray that this, this message had been a blessing to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, if you don't know your purpose, the power of purpose, if you don't know your purpose, Romans 10 and 9, as I give the extension and invitation, hallelujah, to kingdom discipleship. Hallelujah. 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 Romans 10 and 9 says, Thou wilt confess with the mouth of the Lord Jesus. Believe in your heart, God that raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. Romans 10 and 13 says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hallelujah. If this message and teaching has been a blessing to you, hallelujah, you can reach us at the church, hallelujah, Amen. New Jerusalem, hallelujah, Baptist Church, I'm going to give you the address, 3695 Kings Mill Road, hallelujah, Kinsale, Virginia, 22488, P.O. Box 38, where God lives, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You can also reach us on, on the web uh, page. NJBC Kingdom dot Glory to God Webly W E E B L Y dot com Amen. Hallelujah Our phone number is 804-472-4068 Until the next time the May heaven smile upon you This is my prayer In Jesus name Amen, Amen. And thank God for the messenger. Amen. We bless God for this great messenger, this preacher of the gospel. And we thank God for the message that the Lord has given unto him. Amen. Yeah. So praise God, saints of God. You've been listening to the I Am uh, Television Network. Amen. Where Jesus is lifted up. Christ is glorified. Amen. So contact our founder, CEO, and president, Dr. Anthony T. Mays. Amen. And learn how you can be a part of this great gospel enterprise in the name of Jesus. God bless you, saints. Well, praise the Lord. I tell you, that was a very powerful message from uh, Pastor Gerald uh, Smith. I'm telling you, the I Am Television Network dot world is going places. And we had a quality uh, preacher today, yes, teacher. Amen. To make the change. What what comments do you have on that? Oh, he was just teaching me the lessons. He was going from book to book, just teaching all the powerful purpose, feel life. And I really enjoyed that. Amen. Well, let me ask you a question. How do you feel about the I Am Television Network? Are you excited to be a part of the team? I am so excited. I, I mean, I was just telling Dr. Francine, and this is her state. I said, girl, you are working it. This is so wonderful to have and to receive such good messages like this. So I look forward to, to having that same kind of purpose in my state. Now, the other question that I would like to ask you, the states that you're responsible for, what would you want to say to those people in those states? I would like to say to Illinois, you know, Chicago, Illinois is where I was born and raised. I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you in California, <laughs> Mississippi, Georgia, North Carolina. We got some good purpose filled lives there and we want to tell the world about it. All right. Praise the Lord. That's Dr. Vicki uh, McRae. She is uh, one of our business directors and we have several others. But these two are hanging out with us today. And uh, thank you so much. I'm You're so welcome. proud to have you on our team. Glad to be a part of the team. Now, there's another young lady uh, uh, that are with us today, uh, Dr. Francine Green. Uh, how did you enjoy the full, the field purpose teaching and preaching today by uh, Pastor Gerald Smith? Oh, it was powerful, Apostle Mays. I really enjoyed it because, I, again, as he m mentioned in his message, it's so powerful to know your purpose in Christ. Right. You know, and everyone needs to know, and that's a message that needs to get out to the world, that we still have time, even if we have been lacking, uh, we still have time to find out what our purpose is. Wow. You know, God knows where we are. He knows all about us. He created us for that very purpose. And so we still have time to identify who we are in Christ and to know what our purpose is. And so it was a very powerful message today. Yes. And you notice one thing. He broke it down 
that even a baby can understand it. But it was so deep that I'm so glad as an educators like we are, we could understand it. Um, the other thing, how, what are your vision as a business director for the I Am Television Network and World Power Gospel Radio? Well, my vision for the, the network and for the World Power uh, gospel radio station, as well as for my own life, is to get this gospel message out. You know, one of the things that we need to understand is we need to be preaching the gospel today. Yes, yes. You know, we get, need to get back to the basics. You know, we want all this revelation, we want all this prosperity, but we need to get back to the basics and understand what gospel message are we delivering today. We live in a world that so needs to hear the gospel. Yes, you know, yes. and so my vision and my dream and my heart is to be uh, one of many that God is going to use to bring the gospel message, bring the fire so that people can change you know so people can turn from uh their past and learn to go forward in christ wow well the last thing i want to ask you what are you saying to your states out there that you're coming after you're already hanging out with virginia <laughs> amen so tell the rest of those states point to them on that screen and tell them what you want to say Amen. Well, I can tell you, Virginia is my home state, so I'm so excited, you know, that they're here today. But also, you know, God has set a, the habitation in which we live in, and he is coming for every state. I don't care what state you're in. I am the business director for uh, Washington, D.C., Maryland. I live in Maryland now. I'm also uh, the uh, director for Texas, South Carolina, Florida, Arizona, Michigan. God has a word for you, and for everyone who's out in those states, we're coming for you. As Dr. Vicki said, for her states, we're also coming to your state because God has a message, especially for the communities that are in trouble today. God has a word for you, and we're coming to your states. Wow, I really appreciate you, and I'm so glad to have you on the phone. I want to say to them, number one, it doesn't matter what state you live in. If you haven't been covered by these two business directors, just call 301-836-5570. Or you can go to the web website. That's www.wpgr.tv. And you can see these two uh, business directors and others on that website. May God bless you and continue. I'm so glad to have you on our team. God bless you.